I need some support, wife cheated, I am going 180 story, been watching this channel for the last week or so, yet another story of wife cheated and I found out. Here's the story, married 17 years to kids 15 and 13, had our ups and downs like everyone, and we're currently in a down cycle. January 19th, I was suspecting something was up with my wife, as she had been texting like crazy over the past few months. When I asked her why she said it was due to her starting a new job and that was how they always communicated I finally had to know and checked her phone. I came to one stating I wish I could be with you and we could cuddle right now. I was destroyed and could not go any further. In hindsight I wish I had documented everything then, and there, maybe not read them right way, but document them. Instead, I immediately marched upstairs and confronted her. She did not deny it and said it had been going on for about a month. Her sister was in town and her, my wife and our two children left the house. I deactivated her cell phone to stop contact with the OM. The OM is married with two children. I know them as we had gone on a few double dates, but did not have the OMW contact information so I found her on Facebook and told her to call me ASAP. January 20th. I turned her cell phone back on as she was leaving on a business trip in the afternoon and needed it. I texted her telling her it was back on and asked if she wanted to talk. She did not. I did not respond. The OM's wife called and I told her about the affair. She dropped the phone and hung up. Later that evening she called and told me she kicked him out after a huge fight where one of their daughters actually punched him in the face. But whatever. The kids are back at home after her sister dropped them off. Also, the OM's wife exposes the affair to the swim team where they both met. January 21st, Cynthia, it's all my fault, I'll change, please come back, letter. The wrong thing to do, but I had not discovered these forms yet. No response. 22, she was returning from her trip, and I had hoped to talk to her that night. Instead, I receive an email stating she will not be staying at our house. I decided, fine, make her realize her actions have consequences and changed the locks, zeroed out and changed the garage code. I also sent my exposure letter to our family and friends. 23, she picks up the kids for school, and they must have told her I changed the locks. She was leaving the next day on another business trip and needed more clothes. Just happened that way. She called stating she needed to pick up her clothes. I told her she could pick them up after 6 when I get home from work. 6 to 0 rolls around and I get a call from her sister saying she will not be picking up her clothes. 24. I decided to check phone records to find out when the affair had begun. I was disgusted at what I found. It had started back in late June. That's when the texting went sky high. The one month must have been the PA I sent her an email stating I know when it started and was disgusted with her for taking my support of her job and her doing this with it. I said it was her and only her that tore apart the marriage. I also said it was my last communication. I was not able to do it yet. More to come on that. 25. I sent her an email asking that she not make plans for the kids without consulting me, and that I assumed I would be taking over all parenting responsibilities. I was going to a hockey game and needed to work out driving arrangements for my son. I finally called another parent and found out she had organized a sleepover for him. She responded stating the kids would be staying with both of us while we go through this. Initially I said no, they need a familiar place right now. She said she was staying at her mother's house. I agreed with one stipulation, he not be there. She agreed. I went to the hockey game and while there received an email asking if she could stop over the next morning to pick up some clothes. I responded saying the door was unlocked and she could get them tonight. When I got home from the hockey game, her clothes were gone. 26. We had an event where we both needed to attend. I talked to her for a few minutes stating she is welcome home anytime as long as she broke off the affair. She said she did not want to come home, so I gave her the consequences letter and left. The consequences letter was basically I still love her and know we both screwed up but I'm willing to give it another try. We cannot move forward while the OM is in the picture. She must stop seeing him and break all contact. Until then, there will be NC between us. 30. I'm being good about NC nothing. I receive an email from her stating she read my letter and understands this is hard for me, but she is in a different place and has been for a long time. She is moving forward with the divorce and I will be getting served later in the week. I respond stating I understand and agree with moving forward with the divorce. Her actions have caused a lot of pain and suffering, and I would have my attorney review them when I received them. I thanked her for the heads up. 
In the evening her sister called and asked if they could stop over to pick up a few more things. I agreed but said I would be home. I wanted to show her that I was okay with things and project self-confidence. I spent a few minutes talking with the kids, helped her sister carry out a couple of boxes, and really didn't say much to her. I think I pulled it off. Now to today. I am doing the 180. I know I slept a few times but that was before I read more. I have gone to the doctor for a prescription for Chantix and will be quitting while she is gone. The last time I did it I lasted for about two months before I asked my wife for a lighter. With her out of the house I can't do that. I'm working on me. It's still too recent for me not to hope for a reconcile but upon a lot of reflection on our marriage and her I am starting to get the feeling that this really may be for the best. I'm not there yet but I'm trying to be strong and will stick to it. Eventually my actions will become my feelings. I'm meeting with my attorney on Friday and will move forward with the divorce as I know it's what I have to do. I currently don't like the idea but know by doing the 180 I will eventually be okay with it. Since she is moving forward, I can't allow myself to show otherwise. That turned out to be a lot but I wanted to get it all out there. I'm committed to the 180 and know I slipped up but I'm now willing to do what it takes. If that means divorce and losing her forever, well that's what needs to happen. I know my writing does not show I'm doing the 180 yet, but my actions to her does. I've taken all her pictures down, removed her from my contacts and am slowly coming to realize that I may be better without her. It will take time and I know but I'm willing to go through the actions until my feelings catch up. I started this threat for some support and advice. I know it will be hard but I need to do it for me. Also, I will likely need that kick in the back when I have a weak moment which I likely will have. I will probably need to be reminded this is for me, not at a chance to reconcile. I was going to call the OMSW last night but got tied up in a book and by the time I looked up it was after 10 p.m. delayed to call. Whether they are together or not, I'm not going to play the what-if game on that. I can't change it so I'm not going to wonder and dwell. I doubt they are together this week as it was my WS's birthday on 29th, so I agreed that the kids could start the one week on a one week off with her. As long as he wasn't there. I asked the kids and they said it made sense to be with her on her birthday. The affair has been exposed on both sides to family and friends. I've received some very good support from these people. Her family is siding with her which I understand. Blood is thinker than water. She spoke with the kids the night of D-Day and I the next day. Not sorted. The way my son put it she went on a date with another man. I did call it an affair and told them that she really messed up. I think that's enough they don't need to know the details. The OMW contacted me the next morning after I sent her a private message on Facebook. It was hard. My exact words were there is no good way to say it so I'm just going to say it. Your husband and my wife are having an affair. I heard oh my god. She dropped the phone and then hung up. My WW had asked I don't tell the OMW via text as it does not concern her. This is between the two of us. I told her that had it been in EA I may have considered it. But since it was recently physical the OMW had to know. My WW has completely detached. Whether it's due to the fog or not. I don't know. Currently I care but hopefully with time I won't. That's why I'm here. Regarding me. I stared the stop smoking program and teeth whitening. I've also distracted myself with house chores to keep my mind off things. Patched a ceiling that had water damage. Cleaned out a couple of junk closets. Painted one of our storage closets. I'm not overweight 6 feet, 175 pounds but I'm not toned. Lifting is a good idea. I live in Minnesota and was lucky that the day after it happened we had 3 inches of snow. Rather than break out the snowblower, I hand shoveled the entire driveway. I'd say it's 150 feet long and 10 feet wide plus the garage pad. Felt good. I think I'm doing the right things. We'll just need support and guidance as the days go by. R is off the table, she knows. When her sister texted last night to make sure I wasn't there when they came to pick up more stuff, I responded, knowing she would show my WW. I'll be here but will not get in your way. I decided there is nothing I can do or say to change her mind so I'm moving on. Comments. Resist any temptation to indicate to her you want her back. Treat her with complete indifference now. To do otherwise will only encourage her to keep up the affair. She can't feel the loss if she hasn't lost you. Right now, immediately start working out. Take some time and get your head on straight. 
Start making plans and taking actions now for your future life without her. By doing so now, once the heartbreak over all this is largely past you, you'll be hitting the ground running when you decide to start dating again. Do not tell her where you're at, who you're with, or what you're up to. Go completely black on her except where discussions of the kids are concerned. File for divorce and primary custody. Focus on you and your kids for now. Do all of this, and my bet is she'll come crawling back in six months or less. My bet is also that when that happens, you won't be so receptive to reconciliation anymore. OP Updates When I had gone back to look at when the EIA started, I pinpointed it to when my WS and I were both out of town. She an MD for training for her new job she started and INCO training for a new business I was about to open. A few months prior to that she had sold her share of a business she owned and had just landed this great new job. I was very proud of her and we spent a lot of time talking about our new adventures. During our brief text the day after D-Day she even mentioned this was a wonderful time. The thing is I remember her saying to me a few times that it bothered her that whenever we went out with friends, they always wanted to talk about my business more than her new job. She needed the validation. It also explained why she was a high-functioning alcoholic, something that had bothered me for a long time. In my mind, the low self-esteem explains why she drinks. I tried to help her a number of times, but she would have none of it. That's a separate issue, but I wanted to bring it up since it contributed to my awakening moment into the realization that I had been in a fog of my own and somewhat in denial. After that, I was allowed to forgive myself and take an objective look at the relationship. I found a lot of good, but I also found a lot of bad. And with my newfound knowledge, I was able to honestly say it's not my fault and move on to the next phase of healing more quickly than I expected. Called BW to see how she was doing. She said she was fine, sounded sad, but had a friend over so we didn't talk long. She mentioned she is focusing on herself and her kids right now. She said her heart jumped when she saw my name come up on her phone, not because of anything to do with me, but it brings the memories rushing back. She texted a few minutes later saying, it's way too painful to hear a single word ever about WS and WH or any combination. She said she's glad I'm feeling better and wished me peace and healing. I texted back that I understood and hopefully one day will be whole enough to talk. Until then, if she needs something to call me, she'll be fine. Here's where I need some help. I don't want to put the kids in the middle, but here's what just happened. WW emailed me, I will copy paste BS, I'll try to get our February calendar in Google as that is what my lawyer said the courts eventually recommend. I wanted to get the next two weeks laid out sooner than later so we can all get on the same page. I travel a week from Sunday, so we are wondering if the following works to help even out the next two weeks. Kids stay here until Tuesday, February 6, three extra nights this week in exchange for for extra the following week. They will be dropped off at home after practice. I get back late Wednesday, February 13th, and can pick them up after practice on the 14th to then stay with me until Sunday, February 17th. I'll drop them off late afternoon or after dinner, whichever they prefer. Monday, February 18th is President's Day and the kids don't have school. Son is thinking switching on Sundays is the best unless travel gets in the way. Let us know if this works for you, WS. And my response, WW, I've reconsidered and believe my original plan is the best approach. I need to see our kids as well, and this week I have missed them terribly. If your sister and her family want to come over to our house, they are always welcome. I'm sorry your decision to have an affair has become inconvenient for you. What time should I pick up the kids tomorrow? Be it. I'm not doing the 180 by continuing to remind her. I guess I'm still trying to shock her into waking up. Back to square one. I still feel justified in the arrangements. I haven't seen my kids in a week and I really miss them. It's not my fault she decided to leave and has another trip coming up. I am offering to let her take the swim meets as that is something both she and they enjoy. The kids were on the original email she sent but were not CCD on any of them since. The kids have said nothing about staying over extra. My son did mention he wanted to see his uncle who is coming in on Sunday. Her training has been over since June when the EIA started. She is an account executive and needs to fly for client meetings. I was served papers tonight. She beat me to the punch. Amen is in no fault state so the only reason we can give is a breakdown of the marriage. I'm still dealing with the affair and she is meeting with lawyers. She's had this planned for a while. Children are 13 and 15. How could this have gotten so bad so quickly? 
I was digging through papers tonight to gather information in preparation for the divorce and found a Father's Day card from this year. The note said you are a wonderful father and husband. I don't tell you that enough. My doing the 180 has turned into a 180. I need to go back to grieving for a bit, then we'll go back to helping myself. I can't help it. I thought I could do it but don't feel confident enough to fake it at the moment. I have 0% interest at recovering this marriage at this point. No interest in dragging it out either. Partially because I recently opened a new business massage studio, which is currently in the red but trending up and expect profit in three months and partially because I've come to realize just how much energy I've spent on dealing with and coping with her alcoholism. It's a huge reason why we stopped going out of the much needed date nights. She would end up drinking too much thereby ruining the evening for me. She would not remember much the next morning. The problem is that she is high functioning. She may have been plowed the previous night, but would be able to do whatever needed to be done the next day. I got tired of fighting about it years ago and just kept withdrawing little by little. This, no matter how much it hurts right now, is a way to break free and no longer enable. It doesn't matter how bad it was or how bad I let it get. It's all I've known for many years, so it will take a while to process. Yesterday sucked, but I think it was the smack to the side of the head I needed to think more clearly. I skimmed other stories and it gives me hope. I'm starting to get the same feelings he had, starting to see my STBXW for what she is and has become rather than what I wanted to see. I got out for a bit today, shoveled the driveway for exercise. Unrewarding since it was so cold the snow was light. Went grocery shopping and started reading a book that wasn't about affairs. My dad called to check on me, had a good talk. I'm going to a divorce guys meet up tonight. I don't know what to expect. Maybe get some pointers on how to proceed. When they say the emotions are like a roller coaster, man, did they nail it? I hope the trend keeps going in this direction. Thanks for all the support, everyone. An affair really is almost scripted. For me, it's so fresh, and I couldn't see it without you pointing out some of the obvious things I had missed. Rewarding moment the phone rang while I was typing this and asked for my STBXW. I just said, She is no longer at this number and gave them the number of my mother-in-law's where she is staying. The kids are back at home and we're planning a Super Bowl appetizer night. Should be fun. I'm much, much, much happier. My brother-in-law dropped them off, husband of the sister who is here for D-Day, and we had a good talk. My STBXW is actually defending me on some things. Still clawing on most, but defending on some. He even said my mother-in-law is flipping back, and forth too this hatred of men and learned from my mother-in-law. She had a very nasty divorce. Nasty enough that I had to pull her aside on our wedding day to tell her that for one day, just one day, please don't refer to him as the jerk. My brother-in-law is going through something similar, not cheating, but the female side of that family getting something in their head and they just don't care about anything else. There was that small part of me that thought I could be a terrible person. I have not been perfect and am willing to change the things that were lacking towards my kids mostly just being more involved. One thing about my STBXW is that she loves swimming and the kids and very good at it. I had justified that she was there so I didn't need to be. That's one thing that will change. Not right away since I don't want to see my STBXW but eventually. Update, things are going well, having a blast now that the kids are home and there's not so much alone time. My son got me into this game a few weeks ago and has been coaching me on what I've been doing wrong since he's been home. My daughter also plays with us. Went to therapy again last night. She said, if I were to diagnose you now, I'd say you have adjustment disorder with some depression and anxiety. Well, duh, it's going to take a while to get over this. But I am slowly. I still hold on to the picture of what she used to be. Oh, well, that person is gone forever. I'm starting to see exactly how long she has been pushing me away, and she's right. It has been years. There were good times mingled in there, but I start to remember all the things I tried and all the times I asked to do things only to be denied. She decided to be unhappy for whatever reason. There is nothing I could have done. Nothing. I haven't contacted my STBXW since Saturday. She has sent two emails, one for the kid's swim schedule and one for some financial information. I didn't respond to either. Day by day is all I can do. Eating and sleeping are no longer an issue, and having the kids home is a tremendous help. Plus, we've had snow every day so I get to shovel the driveway for some exercise, still continuing the stop smoking program, and notice me urges becoming less and less. Couple things that are bugging me. One, when my brother-in-law came over, 
He brought the trash from where my STBXW is staying, but she brings it over again and bringing it back. Vindictive or not. Two, we have two dogs. One we bought together and one she got herself on her 40th B day. That dog has been a nightmare since we got her. Skin problems, behavioral problems, discipline problems. Running away shets like crazy. I can't stand the dog. I think she should take the dog to where she is staying. That way I get rid of her. The kids have an animal when they are there. And she gets a dose of reality. The mother-in-law does not want her over there because of her shedding. But my view is that is not my problem any longer. Again vindictive and petty. For now, I'm keeping her since the kids mentioned they want to keep her. I told them of course we will keep her, but in my mind I'm thinking why do I have to care for this POS dog because of my STBXW's choices. Thoughts. Anyway, I'm doing pretty dang good, feeling better day by day. I was very proud of myself today. My STBXW is a very go-go-go no matter if it's the right thing type of person. Those following the thread know I was served on Friday, less than two weeks after D-Day. On Sunday, the kids started to stay with me. Sunday evening and onward, she started to send me a number of emails asking for financial information for the divorce proceedings, one of which was from another attorney, not the one who wrote the petition. Not sure what to think about that. I politely pointed out that this was something that she should fill out on her own as I have one from my attorney that is similar. She asked about property and previous tax returns and I said that she should have access to all the information but at this time I would be unable to help since I had more pressing matters to attend to. This is going to get ugly. Damn it. Where is the woman I married? I just want to bonk her with the reality stick. Comments. Going to get ugly? You mean it's not ugly already? After she betrayed you? Asking her attorney to put a line in the divorce petition stating that you locked her out of the house then telling you she's not going to take it out. Whether you realize it or not, she's been building a case against you from the minute she left. This has been well thought out by her. She had this planned. She's having to execute her plan sooner than she wanted to because you caught her. But she was and is planning to screw you over big time. She is mining the kids for info and keeping a log of all the dangerous and unhealthy things you've done. Dad let us have ice cream feeds them junk food. She is on high alert for anything to use against you. Be careful. She is not coming back. You're doing what I did, so a few tips. You are still engaging with her, don't? You are trying to solve her problems still. You have been doing it for 17 years. It will take time to learn not to do that, don't? Type your emails out. Then read them for content. Remove anything that is remotely personal. Only send when clean. Do not discuss her at all with the kids. If you must mention her, call her your mother, use emotionally distancing language. It will help your heart catch up. Hope he responds. I agree. I've started to come out of my very own fog over the past few days and see now what I've been ignoring, rationalizing over the past few years. I couldn't get myself to believe some of the things she would say and do. That couldn't be my wife. Truly is not. While I do miss my wife, this person is not her. I see that now. I'm on high guard as I know I cannot believe one thing she says. The workout felt great. I'll definitely keep it up. Things are going better. The workouts have been helping. Been going every other day for about an hour. I bought some protein powder stuff a couple of days ago. And I'm going to up the workout to daily since the soreness isn't as bad and I feel like I'm ready for daily. I feel better about myself after only a week. Also, five days without touching the lighter. It's a start. I did break and see with my STBXW a few days ago. It was to tell her I wanted her to stay at our house with the kids and take care of the dogs from this Friday to Monday as I am going on a trip. I didn't ask but rather told her, embracing my alpha side, a bit more these days too. She said of course she would. I responded with an enthusiastic awesome thanks and that was it. I spoke to my attorney yesterday and she is putting in the petition response so moving forward with the divorce as well. Today is going to be a tough day. I brought the kids to school, and my STBXW is picking them up so they are gone. Valentine's Day used to be a great day for us. No matter what was going on in our lives, or marriage it was always a great day for us.